Robot Building Supplies, now delivering contact free. Visit robotbuildingsupplies.com.au. Master Builders Victoria, membership provides free legal support. Join today from just $1.40 a day. Drive with Bob Murphy and Andy Ma. I'm going to leave the city. Wes Agar is about to join us. I know you got a couple of texts to read out on the old temper text. Brilliant to see Wes sort of carry the can for bikes like Tony Dottomade and Murph Hughes. Jason Gillespie. Jason Gillespie. Fast bowlers, the cartel, uh, massive Western Bulldogs supporters, mm. one and all. Uh, show their support. Bleed get red, in line. white and blue. Absolutely. Yeah. They do. do anything to get there to support when they can. And there he was on Saturday night. Uh, in the cheer squad. In the cheer in the squad. Cheer, of course, he plays with Melbourne boy, plays for South Australia now, uh, over there in the in the BBL and, and Shield cricket, of course. Uh, but there he was, Melbourne boy, true to his true to his yeah. soul as a dog, yeah. in the middle of the Heartland Western Bulldog supporter. See the cheer nice. squad. You Magnificent. He's about to join us. What a man. What a, what a, what a way to show your commitment Allegiance, to the cause. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. Uh, can I just read a few temper texts? We've had a heap of rocks and pogs. Yep. Uh, rocks, Jason Johannesson's mark running back against Jonas. I want to get to that. Set the tone. Yeah, it's, yep. Pocks, Chris Scott's ex- excuse about the virus. Mm. Rocks, being a Hawk supporter, the cat's choking again. Oh, that's from Simo. Oof. Uh, Joe, a.k.a. J-Dog. Pox, some people lobbying for the dogs to wear their white strip. Nope. It wasn't a problem in 1954. Well done, J-Dog. And it's nothing not a, that's been sorted out. It has it? been. No, tra- traditional jumpers, white shorts. Excellent. Yep. Pox, definitely Port Adelaide. That was embarrassing. Rocks, both Melbourne and the Bulldogs making the grand final. Also rocks that Adam Trelaw may get a premiership medal after Collingwood's decision. That's from Michael in Vermont. A lot of stuff there, and a bit of that's, I'm sure, on your uh, schedule and a bit on mine as well. And we'll get back to you more, more of your calls, Pox Rocks, on the other side of this. But... As we said, uh, just great to see, you know, frontliners of other sports. Yeah, Doggy's favourite son. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Agars. And carrying on a legacy that's um, been laid down before him by some of Australia's thick and thin, Wes. finest bowlers. Uh, Wes Agar, we saw the picture of him in amongst his brethren and the sisterhood, oh. the Western Bulldogs cheer squad on Saturday night. Proudly one of the number, and he's been good enough to join us. Wes, as a dog since birth like you are, that must have been a hell of a night to be there, mate. <laughs> G'day guys, how you going? Thanks for having me on. Oh, I'm gonna. That's a massive build up, but I'm gonna have to hurt you here. Oh, what do you mean? I, um, what do you mean, Wes? I'm a little. I'm a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm a Saints man. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't what? Say I'm not. But, oh, so was um, it Ashton in? Was it Ashton at the game the other night? Was that? <laughs> it, it must have been. But but I um yeah I'll give you the rundown of right. Oh, how did you end? What's in, happened here? How did you end up but, in the cheese squad? It smells a bit I fishy. I have some explaining to do. So yeah, I've I've always had a, a little soft spot for the dogs, and I lived in at Williamstown when when I was back in Melbourne for a few years. <laughs> um, and my my brother's um girlfriend's family is, is a massive dogs family, and she works at Bulldogs. And I got a text during the week saying, oh. Wes, we got some tickets. Um, we obviously can't get there in Melbourne. Uh, do you want to go to the game? And I was like, absolutely, I do. I, I'd love to. Um, and she goes, there's one condition. You have to be and support the dogs throughout the whole game and be oh. avid dog supporter. And I said, Absolutely, I can do that. Let's do it. Oh, oh, no worries. I'll, I'll. And she goes, the only way you're getting tickets if you if you hold up your end of the bargain. So, I said, no worries. And I was going to go actually and buy a dog's top, but I didn't get time because I came back from a fishing trip that day. And I went, I went to the That's game, and, and yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the camera was on me, but yeah, I thought I'd hold up my end <laughs> well, you of the sold bargain it. pretty well. You <laughs> sold it well, Wes. Oh, mate, you look like you were as might be, com- time, might be time to come across, actually, Wes. Yeah, actually, it might be, but I think yeah, I've always had a soft spot for dogs, and I've definitely been following them through these finals, especially with the way they've played and, and what they've come from. So, <laughs> yeah. So what was your phone? What was your phone doing when uh, the, when it was revealed that you there was this photo of you that the Channel Seven crew had caught vision of you in the middle of it all? Uh, you, it must have been going absolutely bunter, was it? It was going bananas, right. and like I said, I came back from a fishing trip that day, and I hadn't charged it the night before, and I reckon it was on about five percent, <laughs> and I had it on aeroplane mode, but I kept flicking it off just to check what was going on, and. Yeah, the the texts I was getting were crazy, and I was like, "Oh no, I better tone it down now a little bit." But I think 
I was too far gone then. I kept going. So the the local, as you very well know, the local Adelaide uh, sporting public can be relatively hostile to out of towners. Wes, um, did any of the of the fallen Port Adelaide's who who would have been in a nice old frame of mind at the end of that one? I reckon. Did any of them uh, spot you during the game and pass on any sort of information to you? Well, yeah. I thought I might have copped a little bit of slack once I knew the photo came out. Um, and I was sort of a little bit wary when I was walking around the ground, going to the toilet or something, just in case a, a beer cup flew past my head or something. But no, they, I actually didn't, I didn't cop any slack um, from the crowd at all or on social media or anything. So I was quite grateful. I was worried I might lose a few uh, Strikers fans for the Strikers after it, but right. thankfully not yet. <laughs> so we're living, as you very well know, Wes, we're living in an atmosphere devoid um, a state of reality over here at the moment with no crowds anywhere. So tell us what mm. it was, what, what was it? We know mm. how great a venue it's like and it wasn't what most of the locals would have been yearning for uh, come Saturday night, but what was the atmosphere like there at the Adelaide Oval? Oh, it was actually, it was incredible. And I, I haven't been to many port games. I'm, I'm, think I'm a bit more of a the Adelaide Crows Adelaide man if I was to sort of pick one or the other so I'd, I'd never really seen Port play too much at Adelaide Oval and seeing that uh the big Never Tear Us Apart song really struck a big atmosphere in the crowd and then I think about five minutes later you could hear a pin drop um but it was yeah it was incredible um the, the noise at the ground I think there was 25,000 but it made it feel like there was 60,000 around I I haven't I haven't known a crowd over there to go from such oh no yeah <laughs> such sort of feverish sort of levels of anticipation to then just fall off the cliff like that did it turn sour at all Wes when the dogs really rammed at home in the second half oh yeah yeah and I think it just made my voice get loud as you can probably tell I'm still a bit hoarse from the weekend <laughs> yelling too much in the crowd. Um, no, well, it no, sounds like you've lived up to your end of the bargain. You got the tickets yeah. for a reason. It sounds like you've you really committed. Which is great. Yeah. Good on you. You could, yeah, you could hear a pin drop around. Like once the dog started running away with it, which they basically had in the first quarter. Um, but halfway through that second quarter, I think half the stands are empty by that stage already. So the last time we saw you uh, until Saturday night when you bobbed up in the middle of the Western Bulldogs cheer squad was um, making your Australian debut against the West Indians. Um, what, what comes next for you? That was that was feels like a while ago now that that, that those matches were played. Yeah. What is your is your you know what your map looks like this um, summer? But is it all locked in, or is there still some uncertainty about? Um, here or there, given given what's going on with COVID and some of these restrictions that we're still living with? Yeah, I think with COVID, you, you sort of take it one week at a time. Um, but we do know we have our first game locked in, definitely. So that's in about 10 days' time against Western Australia. We have a one-day and, and, and a shield game against Western Australia, which we know is going ahead. Mm. Um, after that, it's still a little bit up in the air, and hopefully everything goes smoothly. Um but we definitely know we've got the first game. But it's it's a challenge, but we've got to adapt and, and just prepare as if we are playing uh, a, a schedule that's locked in and, and then adapt and adjust if, if need be. But we've definitely got our first game locked in, um, and I think the boys are really excited to play some cricket. It's been a long pre-season for them. And what have you taken, just before we let you go, what have you taken away now the dust has settled on you making your Australian, you know, your senior Australian team debut what have you taken away from that in terms of self-belief levels and confidence levels Wes yeah I think for me personally I like I think Saturday night showed like I, I'm just I always see myself as just a, just an average bloke I, I, I love watching the footy I like playing cricket and I think I just really enjoyed playing my cricket and at a, it sounds a bit bad but at the time never really saw myself as an Australian cricketer I, I always saw like that was like a superhero thing to do and I think <laughs> to then go and do it and and play that really just lit a fire has lit a fire in me and I think once you play at that level you just want to be back there uh 24 7 and, and that's the level you want to play at so it's made me really want to hold on the field with with the way I play a leadership role um back at the Redbacks and to lead by example and to perform well enough to to, to get a spot again so I think if anything it's just instilled a lot of confidence in me that I am good enough and 
and I am now Australian player, um, and then bringing that back and, and using that um, in a way that I can lead the youngsters um, at the Redbacks because um, we've got a lot, a lot younger group this year. Awesome, mate. Hey, thanks for coming on. Great to see you enjoying yourself on Saturday night. Half your luck. We would have loved to have been over there. Um, good luck with everything in front of you this, this summer, mate. We'll be watching. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys, and go dogs and the granny. Yeah, good, good on, on you, Wes. Good on you. Where's Agar, who, well, as it turns out, isn't a Western Bulldog supporter. Oh. It's a big build, up, wasn't it? Yeah, we really gave that oh. intro a bit of yeah. curry, didn't we? thought we were sort of passing it on from you know one quick to the next mm. and then Wes could yeah, be. The lineage. Yeah, all of that, but it wasn't to be. Yeah. He talked about leadership there. Can I give you more pox rocks on the other side of the boat? one three hundred seven three six seven three six. And if you've got an electric moment from the weekend for NHP, uh, give us a call now. We'll take three nominations for the most electrifying moment on the weekend. You know, we whether we're having this conversation on air or off air about rocks pox, one of the great things is it can be the macro mm-hmm. uh, gives the overview, or you can yep. really drill into tiny Something's, little. Yep. Did you ha- how closely were you watching the uh, national anthems on Friday night? Uh, not as closely okay. as you were, but so I saw something on at the end of the Melbourne. Okay, okay I saw it. Now, I'm not a big linking arms, not linking arms, even though Melbourne linked arms and Geelong boys didn't. So that's okay. Max was singing. Right. Max sung the anthem, which right. which is a massive tick for me. Yep. They're not worried about facing off. He was singing the anthem. He wasn't the most con- – I don't think we ever saw him as a conventional leader. He does it his own way. Certainly Martin Flanagan in this studio called it. two years ago Elders. called it, right? Another one of my segments that's gone missing. When the – only because of COVID, because we can't get people into the studio. Yeah, yeah. After the anthem had concluded, I, I hope somebody else saw this and thought it was noteworthy. You know when the captain's standing alongside the coach and it's arm in arm, at the end of it there might be a little pat on the bar or, yep. or a pat on the back. Yep. Max is a foot and a half taller than Simon Goodwin. <laughs> Max put his hand on Simon Goodwin's head and if, if Goodwin had a lot of hair to ruffle, he ruffled Goodwin's head. Yep. It was friendly. It was relaxed. It was Max. It was a very – it was a little thing but a very Max thing to do. Authentic. It, this the max factor has it, it has infected Melbourne. I, I don't I don't profess to know what it all means, but this version of this of Melbourne this version of the Melbourne Football Club is infused with the flavour mm. of Gorn, and it, it he is more than being a good he's more than a good player. Yeah, he's so much more than a good player, and for somebody like you, who I think regards leadership and thinks about it and thinks about how I can be the best leader to this group of blokes or women who, whatever the case may be, that I'm uh, yeah. invested with the responsibility to be part of. Um, he he is a lot He's to that football He's the leader that club team. needed. Oh, my God. Yeah, and is. it was a tiny little thing. It was so casual and so authentic and so him. I just thought, but don't you God, think- that's Perfect. So something as big as like it's a little little yeah, thing, yeah, you know. But, but yeah, but just on that clue collecting. Yeah, but to to tell a story as big as culture, if you're trying to tell it in a big, you never get there. It's in little moments well, like that. Little moments like that tell you all you need to know mm. about Max and and that connection between captain and coach. A lot of players wouldn't Which be. That's, co- an, that's an easy. That's an easy. Road to follow. Yeah. Well, good. So the young players, look, they feel feed off that. A, a lot of players wouldn't feel comfortable doing that to their coach. No, like because, a, but they've got mutual respect. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. And they've been through it all together. Yeah. It doesn't mean they don't have hard, uncomfortable moments and conversations. And Simon Goodwin would be extremely hard on Max at times. But there's a there's a connection there. Mm. He's They're quite going to bat for each other. That's the good stuff. He's quite the story, I reckon. He really is quite the story, Max Gorn. Uh, Martin, then we'll have a lot of time to talk about him in the next two weeks. Martin's in Diamond Creek before we get to the break. Your rocks and poxes from the weekend to take us home, folks. one three hundred seven three six seven three six. 736 736 G'day, Marty. Hello, gentlemen. Topic is a little different from pox and rocks, or do you call That's it? That's all right. No worries. Bobby Murphy, question. Go for it. Did you go to the 1995 State of Origin game, Victoria versus South Australia? No, I didn't, no. Oh, okay. Well, you got a twin then. Oh, right. Because oh. they interviewed Damien Munkers. 
Like Damien Munkhurst got interviewed on Sunday on the Channel 9 footy show and they showed a highlight of him kicking a goal right. at the MCG in that game and the camera panned to the crowd and there's little Bobby Murphy. You sure you weren't there? I'm trying to... I'm pretty sure it wasn't You would have remembered no, it, would I would have. State game, game MCG, yeah. 95. My memory of mid-90s is better than... Good year, 95. Yeah. Great Ooh, year, 95. Good year for footy, 95, yeah. eh? Yeah. Uh, 18 minutes past... Four. <laughs> 18 minutes past five. Uh, drive again delivered by Deliver It. Great to have them on board. Saving restaurant money, saving restaurants money with Google Food ordering, uh, and also we wouldn't be without the great people from Robot Building Supplies. Fantastic family business that is, and Master Builders of Victoria. Buck forty a day. You can't afford not to be a member.